morning, everyone. We are from Group A, and we're gonna introduce ourselves. My name is Yudin Rukini-san. My name is Agnes Nopalenzi. Hello, my name is Gio Herada. Hi, I'm Dazahan Dini. Hello, my name is Dafa Ramadan. My name is Gisa Haika and we are going to tell you about Plain Table. Okay, first of all, I'm going to tell you about what Plain Table is. Plain Table or Plain Table prior to 1830 is a device used in surfering and relating these pins to provide a solid and level surface on which on make field drawings, cards, and maps. The early use of the name plain table reflected to simplicity and plainness rather than its flatness. And what is the function? In use, a plain table is set over a point and broke to precise horizontal level. A drawing sheet is attached to surface and an elliated is used to cite object of interest. The elliot in modern examples of the instrument, a rule with a telescopic sight can then be used to construct a line on the drawing that is the direction of the object of interest. By using the Elliot as a surveying level, information on the topography of the site can be directly recorded on the drawing as elevation. Distance of the object can be measured directly or by the use of radio marks in the telescope. Next, I want to tell you about how we can use the plan table. Initially, select a point from where all points will be seen. 1. The legs of the tripod should be spread well apart and firmly rested on the ground. 2. Centering of the table is done by using plumbob. If no plumbob is available, centering of the table may be done by dropping a stone from a point on underside of the board which is directly under on the point on the paper. Method of drawing map point is marked on the paper coinciding with point A on the ground. Other point B, C, and D are on the ground are seen from elidate. Actual distance of point A and point C is measured using meter tape. A suitable scale is selected considering dimension of the paper and actual distance between the points. According to the scale, a line corresponding, corresponding point A to B is drawn on the paper using pencil. All points B, C, and D are marked on the paper and joined with the A. Map is drawn by joining peripheral points in sequence on the field paper. Next. Where we can find it, we can find it the plan table where we can when there are construction because the plan table can be used for construction work. Next, I'm going to tell you who invented it, when it was invented, and what are the parts of it. Plan table was discovered in 1610. Some have been credited Johann Richter, also known as Johannes Pretorius. A plan table consists of a smooth table surface mounted on a sturdy base. The connection between the tabletop and the base permits one to level the table precisely using bubble levels in a horizontal plane. The base, a tripod, is designed to support the table over a specific point on land. By adjusting the length of the legs, one can bring the table level regardless of the roughness of the terrain. I'm going to tell you about the price of table surveying. For the price of surveying table in India is 6,000 rupiah, or equivalent to rupiah is 1,300,000 rupiah. Of course, an item has several disadvantages, including the survey table. Following are the disadvantages of plain table surveying is plain table survey cannot be used in rainy season, plain table survey instruments are heavy, cumbersome to carry. The table has to be centered and oriented at every station which is really tiresome. It never produces accurate result. If the survey is to be replot to a different scale or quantity are to be computed, it is a great inconvenience in absence of the field notes. 
and I'm going to tell you about what are the strengths. Following are the advantages of plant table survey. Plant table survey is more suitable for small scale map, and plant table survey is very swift method of survey. Plant table survey is less costly than most the surveying techniques. It does not require skill hand. And about and about the size of plant table, plant table have 750 mm times 600 mm size made of well seasoned wood. The bottom surface consists of a three circular plate for fixing the table on the tripod stand by a wing nut. And I'm going to tell you about the weight of plant table. Plant table outfits could be had that only weighed 6 to 12 pounds and the tripod could be used as a walking stick. Well, do you know how important plant table in civil engineering? It is important in civil engineering because in civil engineering we need to surveying and related disciplines to provide a solid and level surface on which to make field drawings, charts and maps. And plant table is the right tool to do it because no great skill is required in making a satisfactory map and the work can be entrusted even to a subordinate. You know that plane table doesn't require a specific skill, but does it mean everyone can use it? The answer is no. Then who can use it? The one who can use the plane table is a contractor who is conducting a survey on his project. And how do we maintain it? We can maintain it by putting it in at the right spot. Don't let it get wet by the rain because some part of it are not water resist. It's heavy and cumbersome to carry. We have to put it at one right spot so we don't have to move it. This video is one of a series of four training videos that have been created by the Scotland's Rural Past Project to provide guidance on different archaeological survey techniques. You may also like to watch our other videos on using GPS, sight sketching and tape and offset. In this video, the SRP team are going to survey Threepmere Farm in Midlothian and will show you how to do plane tabling, one of several techniques used by archaeologists to create a detailed measured plan of a site. If you wish to record a site which is easily accessible, then plane tabling is a good way to create an accurate, scaled drawing. It's a good idea to have made a sketch of your site before beginning a scaled drawing. You can refer to our sketching videos for instructions on how to do this. This will not only help you familiarise yourself with the site, but will encourage you to observe specific features more closely and to identify different phases of building. You should investigate the site in detail before you begin, and you should also research any existing documents, such as maps, sketches and aerial photographs, so you can compare this information with what you see on the ground. The first thing you need to do on site is decide how to approach your survey and where to set up the plane table. This location is what we call a station. Some sites will only require one station, but others, such as Threepmere Farm, will require several. Here, the team have decided to use four stations to capture all the information about this site, as shown in this aerial photograph of Threepmere Farm. Remember you will only be able to survey within the length of your tape measure, which is usually 30 metres, and within your line of sight, so you need to think very carefully about where your stations should be. The first station should be positioned in the place which gives you the best aspect of the site, from which you can see and plot as many points as possible. It should also be a point from which additional stations can be set up if necessary. Our diagrams are illustrating how each station is visible from another. Once you've decided on your survey strategy, it's time to get the equipment out. 
A plane table is a drawing board, which is placed on a tripod and used with a sighting device called an alidade to create a scaled drawing of a site. A piece of polyester drafting film is taped onto the drawing board with masking tape. You'll need a tape measure and a scale ruler to measure the features and create your scale drawing. To set up the plane table, first of all open out the tripod legs and secure them firmly in the ground. Next, attach the table to the tripod by placing it on top and tightening it with the screw from underneath the tripod. When drawing a building, you should orientate the long side of the board so that it's parallel to the long axis of the building. You can change the height of the table to suit by adjusting the tripod legs. Okay. The next step is to use a spirit level to ensure that the table is completely level. Check both ways, adjusting the tripod legs until you are satisfied it is level. Now you need to mark the centre point okay. below the table. This represents your station. The marker means you can easily relocate your table if it is moved by mistake or if you need to add to your survey at a later date. To mark this point, attach a plumb bob to a line and hang it from the hook which you will find under the tripod. Lower it and mark the location point by sticking a peg in the ground as shown. You are now ready to start thinking about your drawing. Begin by recording the north point and placing a pin in the centre of the board which is directly above the peg representing the station. Then write the site name and grid reference on the drawing. NT 1796364242 You can use a map or a GPS to establish the grid reference. Our video on using GPS explains how to take a GPS reading. Decide what scale to use for your drawing, depending on the size of the site and the level of information or detail you want to record. The normal spectrum of scale used by archaeologists is between 1 to 1250 and 1 to 100. The bigger the scale, the more detail you can record and the more time it will take as you will be plotting more points. The smaller the scale is, the larger the area you can cover, but it will not be as detailed. So, for example, a small scale such as 1 to 1250 might be more suitable for a large site with low footings or earthworks where site information is more limited. Details such as door or window openings are obvious at a scale of 1 to 500, and a large scale such as 1 to 100 would be suitable for recording smaller features with a lot of detail. In this instance, the team have decided on a scale of 1 to 200, which will allow them to record all the information they need from this site. Once you've decided on the scale, find the corresponding side of a scale ruler to help keep your drawing accurate. You then need to choose some reference points and cite them on your plan. Marking these points means you can then come back to the site in the future and use these points as a reference to ensure the plane table is angled in exactly the same way as it is now. These points need to be outside the area you are drawing and should be fixed points in the landscape such as a fence post or a telegraph pole. It's important to choose points which are at different angles from each other. Ideally, they should form a triangle with the station. To mark a point, begin by sighting through the alidade. Keep the alidade pressed against the pin in the centre of the board and move it around until the two sights line up with your point. Then, 
Near the edge of your page, away from where your plan will be, draw a ray along the side of the alidade closest to the pin. Now you are ready to start recording your site. You need to think about which points to plot on your drawing. With a building, choose a logical place to start, such as a corner, and work in one direction. It's advisable to get the external footprint of the structure first, and then survey the interior. If you wish, you can use a ranging pole to mark the point you want to take. Then plot it by sighting through the alidade in the same way you did when finding your reference points. Remember to keep the alidade pressed against the pin in the centre okay. and always to draw your ray on the same side of the alidade, the one closest to the pin. When you've done this, take a tape measure and measure the distance between the point and the centre of the plane table. Write this distance on the ray you've drawn. Doorway right. Okay. Work your way round the feature, recording the angle and the distance to your points like this. By using this method, you can use your measurements to work at a different scale if you want. Good. Then, take your scale ruler, find the appropriate scale, put the zero against the pin in the centre of the board and the other end of the ruler along the ray, and measure and plot your points. You might want to make a small notch in the ruler beside the zero point so you can rest the ruler against the pin and keep your measurements consistent. You can then join the dots to see the scaled representation of your site. Be careful though that you don't take too many points before joining them up. You could end up getting confused about features such as openings. With time and practice you'll find your own preferred method of working and it may be that you prefer to plot the points and join them as you go along. Bear in mind that your plan will be representing a slice through the building at sill height, which is about 0.5 metres above ground level, so it is the footprints of the walls you are recording. Once you've finished one wall line, you can move on to the next. Once you've got your wall line, it's not essential to measure in every opening with your plane table. If the wall is straight, you just need to cite features such as openings through your alidade and mark them on the wall line on your plan. You can use a hand tape measure to record certain features which you can't see from the plane table, such as wall thickness. Now the team have taken all the points from Station 1 and the plan looks like this. It's time to move on to Station 2. To do this you need to sight in to where the next station will be. Measure it and mark it on your drawing at Station 1. Okay, 13.49. Good. Okay. Then move the plane table to station 2 
and set it up in exactly the same way as before. You should take a new piece of paper and begin a new drawing. Remember that the pin in the centre always represents your station and so from your new position the pin represents station 2. Don't forget to add your reference points and north arrow. Now take a ranging pole and place it on the peg which represents station 1. Find it through your alidade and back sight from station 2 to station 1. You're now ready to start recording all the points you can see from station 2 and then repeat the process for your remaining stations. By overlaying the drawings from the four stations you can see how the plan builds up here with points from station 1, station 2, station 3 and station 4. Once you've done this, you can go round and add missing features using a hand tape to plan them onto your drawing. You can also use drawing conventions to add information to your plan, such as detail on construction materials and whether upstanding walls are above or below sill height. That's all we've got. We hope you know more about plane table and also understand about how important plane table is. Thank, Thank you, you for your attention. attention.